Hi, my name is Kyler Rhodes, and today I'm uh, here with boys basketball varsity assistant and junior varsity coach Mullins. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And let's get started right away. Um, what are your expectations for this season? Well, uh, uh, you know, from last year where we were, you know, four and I think it was 20, I think this year is just building on that, whether it's one game over that, four games over that, 10 games over, I don't know, but it's, it's something that we have to build on each year. Is, you know, if it's four wins this year, we've got to get to five, to six, to seven, eight. Each year, you just want to keep building on that. And speaking of improvements, uh, what are some of the biggest areas the players have improved in the offseason? I mean, like, you know, the IQ of the, you know, of the game, you know, we've got have to get them to learn things that, you know, they don't know. I think this summer was big when we, we went and played at a couple of different places against, you know, high level competition. I think they understood where those teams were at is kind of where we want to be. And once I think you're seeing that now translate over to the court in the first couple of games that we've played. And obviously this changes over the years, but how would you describe your coaching style? Um, <laughs> Well, like I, like I said, it was, you know, I'm more mild now than I was a couple of years ago when I coached. I'm, you know, I played college basketball, so going hard and playing hard, I always got, you know, you know, old style coaching was yelling, getting your point across by yelling at players. And sometimes you have to back that down and really talk to the players to get them to understand things without yelling. Yeah. Um, how important is it having player leadership on a team? And have you seen any guys in particular really step up this season? Um, yeah, you know, it's really hard. You like to see, you got to grab one guy that can take role of your team. So that way, when you say things on, you know, on the court and maybe the, the, the kids can't hear you and you got that kid, it's like, hey, this is what coach said. This is what we're doing. Um, you know, you always want to get, you know, an upperclassman, you know, because they've been there and they've done it. So, that, you know, if they've been here for four years, they, they understand what it takes to be a leader and how they need to lead the team. And how have your upperclassmen really uh, adapted to that role? Well, watching like the Mon Brady and Caleb Mundell, Cochran and Antic and Wheeler, guys that are seniors, you know, they're doing a great job. Like, you know, they're grabbing the younger kids, you know, because, you know, they, they haven't been in this environment. So, you know, if they're getting yelled out by coach, you know, they're picking up the younger kids saying, hey, this is how things go, man, you're good. You know, he's just trying to get more out of you. And being the JV coach, you definitely know how this works. Uh, how are decisions made on whether a player has moved up or down from JV to varsity? Well, you know, a lot of it's always going to be on somebody's play on the court. So, and, and that doesn't mean that's all that is because, you know, we want to have good character kids on the court, whether it's their attitude or, you know, just, you know, hustle kids. You know, it, you know if you, you practice how you play, play how you practice, if you're doing that every night consistently, you know, we may say, hey, you know, this weekend you're going to move up and we're going to keep you up here. And obviously uh, assistant coaches are very important in a program. And what is the role of an assistant coach in building a program? Well, I, I mean, I think it's more of like helping out coach because he can't do everything. You know, you've got two teams here all the time. You know, he's focused on certain things. When you got 20 kids out here, coaches are important in that aspect. You also, re, you know, like going out and scouting other teams and, uh, you know, whatever it may be, you know, you know, making sure that we have everything we need on road trips. You know, he can't sit there and, you know, he can write a list down, but there's always something he may leave out and then we add it in. So. More about uh, on the court action. Uh, what is the Cougars offensive and defensive philosophy? Well, you know, like right now we're trying to fix some things that have been the last couple of years. Um, offensively, you know, we wish, you know, we want to drive away threes, which you guys wouldn't know what that means, but just, you know, wide open threes, you know, paint touches, um, you know, just putting, putting points up on the floor. And then defensively, we want to get stops. You know, we don't want to just, you know, right now I think we're struggling a little bit defensively, but we're going to fix that. Um, but, you know, we don't want to give up over, you know, 40, 50 points a game. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're going with it right now. And this can be tough, um, especially with a new coaching staff trying to get buy guys to buy in. But how does the coaching staff create a positive culture? Well, Coach Marin has been awesome. You know, he's uh, came in like he always says, juice and compete. And he brings in that energy and, you know, it feeds. He passes it down from us all the way down to the very last kid on the team, whether it's, you know, junior varsity or freshman. So, you know, he's that's what he does. He brings energy to the court. How important is it for the entire coaching staff to be on the same page? Well, you, you, you know, you always want to be on the same page with the coaching staff. Even if you disagree with something, you don't want to let the kids know that. Like you want to, you know, because if you do that and you think, you know, we're out of order or something like that, things aren't going to be working the way they need to be, whether it's, you know, if the JV's got one philosophy and the varsity's got another, well, those kids will never make it because they'll be like, you're not doing what, what I'm saying. And, you know, ultimately he's the head coach. So we want to be on what page he sets and we just all want to get on it. But it helps, it helps build what we're trying to build to where you all got to be on the same page, same roles, all that stuff. Of course. Um, how do you guys deal with discipline issues and repeat offenses? Well, luckily we haven't got, you know, gotten to that yet with this team. Um, you know, obviously we take things very ser seriously, whether it be, you know, in school or out of school or on the court. Um, you know, we would just, you know, there's just a process that we would go through and, 
luckily we haven't got to that and we don't want to get to that so we want to keep doing what we're doing um, be who we are but we would take things seriously and, we, and they would get uh, punished accordingly this is kind of a similar question earlier but how do you get players to buy into the program it's it's tough it's not easy um, you got to get everybody to accept their role um, you know because you you got to understand not everybody's going to be able to score 30 points and be that guy you know what i mean no one's going to be the michael jordan or the kobe Bryant in your team mm -hmm. so if we get eight guys that average nine points that's what we want or you know say a guy is going to come out every night and i'm just going to set screens and rebound um, you know or you know your leading scorer says man i'm missing shots but i'm going to get other guys involved it's buying into your role that's helping the team win it's not about you or you know it's not about yourself but it's about our team that we're trying to build and we're trying to win um, obviously the classroom is very important and what is the coaching staff's academic and behavioral expectations for the players well you, if you don't get the grade you can't play so every you know we expect our kids to do you know better in the classroom than we do on the court you know that's you know let's be honest it's hard to keep go play college or play pro so you're looking forward to you know getting a job you know this is where it starts you know yes it is about basketball too because that's what you're here and that's what we're doing but it starts in the classroom and we expect our kids to, to do what they're supposed to be doing in there and speaking of coach Meredith what has impressed you about him the most in your time here just how full of energy he is and how much fun he has on the court you know I've never seen the guy come in a bad mood I really haven't like he comes in every day you know I've had a couple days where I felt you know bad felt sick and I don't know if he's sick or not or just doesn't get sick, but comes in full energy and has fun. So, and it makes it to where we have fun on the court. And the kids, you know, if the kids had a long, bad day, they come in, you know, you can tell they're moping around. Mm -hmm. He fires them up and gets them going. We usually have pretty good practices. Yeah, that seems very important. Um, what impresses you most about this team? Uh, you know, right now it's just their bond together. Like, you know, you always have teams where you think kids, you know, it's just about him. You know, I think these kids really care about each other. They care about the coaching staff. They, you know, they're just good kids, you know. And like I said, we're trying to build something into them where we can get them to understand, you know, the unity. And I think they have that. And I think that's the best, their best attribute of the team that they have is all of them together. How do you balance being the JV coach and a varsity assistant? Well, it's tough because, you know, JV, you get, you're kind of like your own little team. You know, you come in during the week and, you run other teams' offenses, other teams' defenses that the varsity is getting ready to play. So don't really have a lot of time to work on your stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's tough because you don't get to work on your things. And, you know, you're trying to get these kids to go hard at the varsity to make them better, to make themselves better. And then, you know, like after you get done with the JV, you come, now you got to get focused on what the varsity is getting ready to do, what game plan they have. So you got like two different game plans each week. Or, you know, we could have three if you play Friday and Saturday so mm -hmm. or four. So. And being the JV coach, uh, what's it like seeing former JV guys on varsity and uh, getting their chance to play? It means they put their work and their time in. You know, it may not start out how they wanted to. You know, there's a lot of kids that are freshmen, sophomore that want to play varsity, but they got to understand they got to put time in. And when you see a kid next year, like, man, you made it here, so let's see what you can do now. Um, and so it's it's nice, nice to see. And you know, we got a couple kids that I coached a couple years ago that are on varsity that are doing pretty good. Yep, so hopefully it's a big season for the Cougars. I wanted to say thank you once again oh. for coming, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.